Yeah, welcome back to DXB today, where we're taking a special focus on all things branding tonight. So, uh, how does a brand affect your business? Well, one man who certainly knows the answers is our next guest, CEO of Idea Spice Design. Uh, Sajid Ansar joins us live here on the sofa. Thanks so much indeed for being with Thank us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so, there are so many definitions of brand out there. You know, and especially when it comes to businesses, a lot of business, real entrepreneurial spirit here in the UA, a lot of SMEs starting up, etc. Is there one sort of given definition for your brand or not? So when we work with SMEs, we say the simplest definition is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Uh, I guess that's the simplest way to say it. And for example, when we hand over to a client, we tell them that it's not your logo. It's how you pick up the phone and follow for payment. It's how the bathroom smells. It's how you welcome somebody. It's checking if they have parking. I think it's a set of all the things a customer feels is really a sum of branding. Most people feel it's a logo, but it's not a logo. Logo is a visual representation of what makes you stand apart. But it's really what people say about you when you're not in the room. Which is more a sort of, it's more organic. Isn't it is it? organic. Something that, 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 that's coming together. Every and it's constantly of... evolving. You can have one thing going wrong and your brand tumbles. So it's, you've got to keep at it. So that's what a brand is. It's a sum of everything and it's constantly evolving and you've got to keep with the times. Nice. Sajith, I want to hear about a success story here. Tell yeah. us about a brand that had no idea what they were doing and you stepped in, what did you help them do? So one of my favorite stories is a 100-year-old ceramic company, uh, one of my friends from school, and they were close to shutting down. Uh, and what I tell people is branding is more of a change management yeah. tool. So we actually looked at, it's an old ceramic way of making tiles, which was a dying industry. So one, we designed the tiles. And we got the leading architects to actually design tiles, influencers. And we redid the whole thing from the brand. We changed the name. So it was called Bharat Flow Tiles. It was, a, it was a mouthful. We changed it to BFT. And we worked out new ranges, new products with that. And As in to modernize it or for to with what intention? It, make it relevant for today's okay. times. So a lot of the leading cafes started using those tiles. Homes started using it. And just having it packaged in a different way than just being boring. So it was not, a brand was really about the product, uh, how it's packaged, the brochure, the website, uh, the business card. And we looked at all the wastage and made a new range which was actually mixing tiles. And so we looked at all the price points, margins. So we really transformed the industry. So that's more exciting. When you just do a logo and you walk out is not fun. When you can transform and completely change them and they've grown, more people have got employment, that's more exciting. Yeah, yeah. So experience. Yeah. What do you think, Lucy? What do you think a lot of the mistakes brands make out here? What sort of common mistakes sure. do you see out here? So I think first thing is not spending on branding, I would say is the, is the first mistake. Because most people think it's a logo, my cousin will do it, uh, my printer will do it, yeah. <clears throat> I've got Canva. And they don't realize it's strategic. Uh, it's almost like you know a McKinsey format meets a creative format. It's really a change management. You've got to attract new people into your company. That matters. If you have 10 quotes, how do you stand apart? So it's a lot of other aspects. I think the first mistake is not understanding it and thinking it's just a logo or I can go online and pick it up, that it's a whole lot more than that and not investing in it. Uh, and I think in this part of the world, earlier people got successful very early. They were trading and they were trading and they were competing on price and quality. So that game is over. So you can't compete anymore on price and quality. Everybody knows where to go, which exhibition to go for. So it's about the engagement with the consumers. So there's a lot of second generation entrepreneurs who understand this. <clears throat> and I think a bulk of our clients are second generation who have come in to successful companies. It could be anything, manufacturing, and they're transforming it. So I think that's the main thing that how do you compete with the big multinationals mm. by standing apart, engaging with your customer, and not losing them. Mm. So I've got to ask, if I was to come to you with my company, what is your formula for creating a great brand? So we have a repeat formula which we work. So first of all, we say we're a 21 year old startup. Uh, so we've been around for 21 years. We've done 2000 brands. We've done for governments. We worked on Brand Dubai. Uh, we're doing this for governments around the world, but the passion is to work for the neighborhood stores with the smaller. We work with a lot of uh, homeowners. So the format is always the same, is to study from scratch again, the competition. What are they doing? How do you set yourself apart from everybody else? So if you're going to, if a client comes in, I want a Chinese restaurant and we say that, there are probably 84 Chinese restaurants in Karama alone. So why you? So what's the difference? And we have clients who say that I like food. And we have to start by saying you're going to fail. There's an one percent failure rate in the food industry here. So how does it stand apart? We get them a food consultant. We connect them. We look at the, the format, the price points. So we start by researching how do you differentiate? 
we look at the world benchmarks how do you now compete with the best in the world mm. and then we come back and say this is your dna this is your persona and this sets you apart and we put that in stone and we have a lot of change management tools because smes have to understand what has to happen so we do a lot of things to educate them and after a point you're becoming a coach more than a mm. a logo designer you really change management you're working with them you're understanding who can make the brand fail so it's not the owner there'll be people down the line so it's a lot more complicated than it looks and we love that and and i say that if i can't meet the ceo i don't want to take up the project mm. because you cannot make a difference by doing a logo for someone lower down it's got to be top down and you've got to become their best friend and that's one thing i've learned that they've got to know that you're partnering you really care about them and that's something which we do so yeah. who do you like working with most what sort of, who are your like dream clients that you enjoy working I think with i always look for second generation entrepreneurs uh, because they've been exposed they've gone out most of them have gone to the uk to the us and they understand the importance of marketing they know the value of it and they're coming back to successful companies and they know there's a big mismatch from what they've exposed and the fathers led the company to a point there is a glass ceiling so i love successful companies with glass ceiling second generation entrepreneurs mm. any any brands out there that you really like that you've got your eye on they could be watching of course for yeah so <laughs> yeah so for example we we actually if i uh, were to not define it it's basically companies who are successful but when they give their business card it doesn't match up to to yeah. where they are at mm. so the thing i tell friends is if you find an ugly business card you find something which doesn't match think of us mm. because usually successful companies they've got to stand out they've got to get their price points out their margins can go up when you do branding so it could be manufacturing so mr right? bezos if you're watching all right sajit's <laughs> available okay I'm we'll put man. you in touch <laughs> we can put you in touch we'll sort it out it's fine so, sajit i know this is a subject we're going to be delving into quite a bit over the next couple of episodes is artificial intelligence how is ai impacting the industry and your work is it taking it away from you <laughs> not really so i guess there is a lot of fear which comes in from ai and one if it's strategic it doesn't need to and it's also how do you use it it's the prompts which you write mm. like we had a scenario where there was a very famous restaurant which is open now in madina which is called atrangi yeah so <clears throat> one of the most famous chefs from india she's come in and she's worked with grandmother's recipes and she wants to make it cool so the concept we came out is we want to take old indian grandmothers but they're doing crazy things like skydiving uh, scuba diving <laughs> they're djing so the only way we could do that was with ai so we got this really photorealistic grandmothers doing the craziest of things so you've got it all over the place even inside the bathroom when you close it, there's a grandma saying what are you doing in there so we got that quirk and we managed to capture the brand essence and the differentiation using ai i think you've got to embrace it know how to use it and not get threatened by it Okay. I got a lot of I feel like we need to continue this conversation sure. another time. Got a few things to debate there. Saja, thank you so much for thank all so the much. amazing advice and tips and insight. I really I appreciate here. having you. you here. Now, today's spotlight is a design company who believes that good design goes beyond visual appeal, elevating purpose-driven brands and passionate entrepreneurs through their impactful design. This is Deepavali Kavalani from We Design Global. Hi, I'm Dipali and I'm the founder of We Design Global. We're a branding and design studio specialized in crafting and creating brands that leave a lasting impression. We work with startups and entrepreneurs and brands all over the UAE um to help them to create their whole visual identity system and supporting brand collaterals. The problem that we see that our clients usually face is that they have a vision in mind. but they're not exactly sure how to execute it visually so where where the go to um sort of design firm and the brand firm for them to visually execute their business and help them to strategically create a strong brand identity that resonates with their target audience and helps them to elevate their brand and increase their sales So we have a strong presence in Bahrain and the UAE and we've helped about 75 plus brands with their branding and design projects. Um I've also been featured in the Women with Impact series which is a newsletter series started in the UK. I feel like um in terms of running the business the market is quite saturated and there's fierce competition. So the challenges I've faced is um 
how to stand out in a competitive, saturated market, how to stand out amongst all the other agencies in the branding studios. And I think over time, I've learned how to strategically position myself in the market as well and offer a unique um, value to my customers. So in the long term, I would love to work with uh, the government entities here and I would love to grow on a global scale and work with uh, larger multinationals as well. So there is a lot of ease that comes with operating your own business here. I think the government really supports entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs. So the processes of starting your business and operating your business have become really easy here. And there's a diverse and really helpful community around the UAE as well. Yeah, fascinating stuff. Right, time now for tonight's roundup. Amy, what you got for us? Well, Tom, <laughs> um, we want to know, is AI-powered personalization a game changer for designers? The reality is that AI does not undermine the basic principles of design thinking, but it does profoundly change the practice of design. So guys, how do we feel about that? Lucy, you're in the business. Do you think AI is going to be taking over anytime soon? Um, but no, it's not going to, it's never going to take over me. No. No, it's never going to take over you. It's a good oh, I was going to say, I think for me, I mean, I'm an, I live under a rock when it comes to like AI and things like this. But I mean, I've seen that you can go on and you can search like logo creators and then you say what color themes you want to have and you know, what is your yeah. brand about? And then it creates a logo. Yeah. But It'd be a bit I never, of a drag and drop, I think. Yeah, I was, I never, I'm never yeah. fully amazed by anything that the AI generators I, Yeah, I feel with. like everything they generate... I actually downloaded one of the apps recently. I'm not going to mention which one. But honestly, one, the, one of the issues with it is that everything feels very generic. So I feel yeah. like, yes, it's Duty. great. It makes it a bit more accessible to everyone. However, the fact that it's generic might make it easier as a starting point. Correct me yes. if I'm wrong, Lucy. Yes. But if a graphic designer or someone in marketing wants to kind of get an idea for their client, yeah. maybe it's a great way to present present 30 options and then it's a good starting point. But I feel like if you're hiring a company, you're gonna take it much further than the generic options yeah. that are being presented to you that, let's be real, are based on a million different options that are already out there. So giving it that extra touch is, is I think, is gonna hopefully continue to go I beyond think, AI. Yeah, generic is, is the right word. I think if you wanna write an apology letter to your boss, you know, there's AI that's gonna really help that. But if you suddenly say, I've got real problems in my business. I need to stand out. I need to find new clients into my business. I don't think it's going to magically come up with a campaign by eight o'clock the next day. I mean, the only thing I would say is that you know we're we're only scratching the surface of the potential of AI at the moment. And if you listen to those invested into it, you know the future is is going to be driven a lot more by it. And to that end, you know, skills of graphic designers is something that AI would be able to mimic further down the line. So. I'm sure there are there are graphic right, designers. Tom. But Lucy's not graphics. happy with your answer. But not just graphic designers. I'm not having and a presenters go. Presenters as well. I'm going to say exactly. We're an AI industry. moving One into every the most presenters. Most popular content creators out there right now is AI generated. Yeah, I've seen that. She is fabulous. But, but it's been doing yeah. it for years in, in architecture. I mean, mm, uh, yeah. when you look at the the technology that we've had, able to take architecture to the next level. That doesn't mean that architects are going to be obsolete forever. And graphic designers won't as well yeah. because I think they add that yeah. human element. But the practicals of, mm. of graphic design, and, and especially if we're looking at it from a logo point of view, it, it is going to be an interesting space to watch for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, AI is detecting cancer in patients now, right? Much more effectively than doctors are. I mean, I just think you got to figure out a way to yeah. work alongside technology. But yeah, there was a time where people were afraid of calculators. I thought we'd all be dumb if we used a calculator. But yeah, I think it just helps us progress. <laughs> it's just hard to envision that right now. It feels like, don't you take our jobs. <laughs> Keep them happy. Exactly. Keep them happy. Uh, right, it's time for us to have a little look at what is coming up for the remainder of the episode. This is what to expect. Nimi meets renowned humanitarian Guru Dev Shri Shri Ravi Shankar at COP28 to discuss how mental health is connected to planetary wellness. And coming up, we discuss the importance of color in branding with the founder of Bloom Marketing Studio. Plus, we've got music in the studio that is brilliant. You're going to get goosebumps. Stay tuned.